What's going on everybody? I'm Mark Vins, and today I'm taking you on an adventure with me to search for the bizarre typal creatures of New England. Ah, it's pitching me. It's about to be low tide for the day out here just south of Boston, Massachusetts. And this is the first time we've gone exploring in the tide pools of New England, the east coast of the United States. We film many tide pool adventures on the west coast, but I'm really excited to get out here today. These will be some debut creatures for the Brave Wilderness Channel, meaning we've never seen anything that we're gonna find today before. To throw a little twist on things, we're going to build another tide pool aquarium so we can get a closer look at some of the smaller creatures that can be found here later in the day. But before we can fill this tide pool aquarium with cool creatures, we've got to find them. And to do that, we're going to grab our bucket, dip net, and a good set of gloves. Let's get into it and see what kind of cool stuff we can find. Here we are, the first tide pool we're going to explore for the day. And I can already see a couple of creatures we are definitely interested in getting a closer look at. Now you'll notice these rocks are absolutely covered in snails. These are a very important part of this environment. It's worth getting a couple of these. Let's go ahead and put those in our bucket. First finds of the day. Tide pooling, in general, produces the most bizarre life forms that we can feature on the Brave Wilderness Channel. Oh yeah, here we go. We got some really good rocks to flip here. Ha ha, got a crab. He's trying to pinch me, but I have gloves on. Not today. Getting some really good stuff so far. Looks pretty good. Oh, that is a great sandworm. We will take a look at these here and let them go. And the reason these aren't real great for our tide pool aquarium is they really are subterranean. As soon as we put down some of the rocks and the sand in the aquarium, they're just gonna bury. So because of that, it's better to observe these creatures right here on the surface, but let's get a couple cool shots of these. These are very neat animals, very bizarre creatures. And these are aquatic worms and they can swim. Whoa, creepy. There they go. Very interesting finds out here in the tide pool. Oh, right on my finger. That is actually a great find and is going to be a big part of the story when we build our tide pool aquarium later. I know it doesn't look like much, but believe me, when you learn more about the creature that I have in my hand, you are going to be super surprised. We're at that point where we're looking for the really difficult to find creatures. So I'm always looking for areas that just were recently covered with water as the tide is receding, uh, like this area right here actually. Let's try this rock, oh boy. That was a heavy one, nothing new there. All the same, actually, wait a second. That is a new one. That is the species I was looking for. Yeah, woo, got another one. Great, that is perfect. You can let go now, there we go. All right, cool. Haha. -ha. yes. We found quite a bit so far, flipping rocks. I think it's time to get out the dip net and try another tactic. Uh, I like this pocket here, this pocket looks really good. See how there's this low overhang? That low overhang is great refuge for a lot of creatures that might be swimming in there. We wanna do this fast. And just got a lot of snails on that one. Try to get underneath, it's a little bit better. Oh yeah, there we go. Those are shrimp. Gotcha. Perfect. Look at that, that's a good one. We've got seven species so far, and I feel like that is pretty good. I think if we got one more for the day, we are ready to build our aquarium. Nope. Ha ha, I got it. That is exactly what we were looking for, folks. Okay, great. That is perfect. Okay, that's gonna conclude the searching portion of today's tide pool adventure. Now, let's make it back to our base camp and set up shop. Woo, man, that was perfect. Oh man, I didn't think I was gonna find that last one. Before 
we start introducing any of the creatures themselves, we need to sort of build up the environment. Let's make the habitat look like the tide pool environment that we just found these creatures in. So the first thing I'm going to do, because this is a rocky environment, is just get some of this coarse sand. This is pretty much the look of the environment, and we don't need a ton. And I think the first one that we're going to add also has an organism on it. This right here is a blue mussel, and these are the exact same mussels that you see served in restaurants. They're a big part of the marine sustainability out here in New England, these mussels actually attach themselves to rocks just like this using sticky strands called bisel. Bisel is what mussels use to affix themselves so they're not washed away by the tides and the crashing waves in this environment. I'm gonna put that down in there. So let's work our way smallest to biggest with all of these type of animals. I got a few shrimp, so let's put a few shrimp in there. We'll have a better chance to see them. There we go. A shrimp, which of course is a crustacean, feeds on small zooplankton and other animals, is definitely part of the cleanup crew here in the tide pool environment, but they're really cool looking. They've got a almost a zebra stripe to them, blue claws, and almost transparent. You can see all of the insides, much like a glass frog. I can see everything going on in there. Very cool addition to today's tide pool aquarium. Now, these are none other than our favorite little friends, the hermit crab. And hermit crabs are crustaceans that use snail shells that are now vacant to call their homes. And they actually look a lot more like a lobster than they do a crab. They have a long hooked tail that helps them wedge their way into the shell and stay tucked in. But as you'll see very soon, they'll start crawling around on the bottom of the tank. In my left hand, I have what is called a periwinkle. And a periwinkle is a very common snail species here in New England and in these tide pools. And in my right hand, I have what is called a dog winkle or a dog whelk. And believe it or not, the periwinkle in my left hand is the favorite food of the dog whelk that's in my right hand. And I have to say these dog whelks are voracious predators. They will affix themselves to a bivalve like a clam and then they will use their spiralized tongue to drill into the shell just like that and they will slurp out their meal over a long period of time. It's pretty crazy if you ask me. Here we go. Time for the all-stars of today's tide pool aquarium. We have not one, not two, but three species of crab. This is a first. The smallest crab is an Asian shore crab. It's got really sharp claws, and then of course, two decent sized pinchers right there. Now this is one of the invasive crab species here in New England. They obviously called the Asian shore crab, come from Asia, and uh, you can identify them because they have three spines to the right and the left of each eye. Even though it's invasive, these Asian shore crabs are certainly, ah, he's pinching me, established at this point in time. So it will make a great representative of today's tide pool aquarium. Look at that, right in front of the rock for the camera. All right, time for the second species of crab for the day. This fuzzy little crab is none other than the Jonah crab. And this is a native crab, and you can tell because it doesn't have three or five spikes next to the eye. In fact, if we can macro in there past the fuzz, you would see that it has nine spikes on each side of the eye, three in the middle. The three I can actually see right there in the middle. But this Jonah crab, is supposed to be here. Very cool. Okay, welcome to the Tide Pool Aquarium. You make a great addition. What we have next is none other than the voracious predator of the tide pools, the green crab. Look at that crab. And this is an absolutely beautiful one. They come in a few different color morphs. This one is green and it has purple claws, purple tip claws. And I can tell it's a green crab, whoa, because it's very feisty, number one. Definitely, ah, it's pitching me oh, on both sides. Okay, okay, I'm not wearing the gloves anymore, so it definitely hurts when you get pinched. Ah, these crabs prey um, upon mollusks and the other food species that the Jonah crab that we just saw relies upon. So they are an invader and a threat 
to this environment. Unfortunately, they have taken hold because they've been here for over a hundred years. And the reason I got two green crabs today was not to get pinched more, which is undoubtedly going to happen. Whenever you hold two crabs, you often always get pinched. So we have both a male and female green crab. So the way I could tell the difference uh, between a male and a female crab is by looking at the apron. The narrow apron is the male, the wider apron is the female. They do get a lot bigger than this. Green crabs can actually grow up to four inches from side to side on their carapace. Of course, that's the top of the crab shell. And they can actually stay out of water for nearly eight hours at a time, uh, which is a lot more than the other crab species here, making them a very invasive and robust predator of this tide pool. To cap off today's adventure, let's put them in there. Let's now add a few embellishments. We've got some bladder rack seaweed, a very cool plant that you'll find here in New England. The reason it's called bladder rack is because it has these little bladders of air that help it float to the surface when the tide moves in like it is right now so that that way they can get closer to the surface to attract more light and they do need to photosynthesize to eat. A couple of really cool shells to just add the finishing touch. And there you have it. And the tide has returned. So I guess that's gonna be about it for today. I hope everybody at home enjoyed this East Coast tide pool adventure where we built another tide pool day aquarium. Now we're gonna take a couple of photos and then release all of these creatures right back where we found them. I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, let's get a few pics and let them go. If you enjoyed this adventure, make sure to check out the time we explored the West Coast for a whole new cast of spiky and slimy tide pool creatures.